Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Joe Rule from Raconteur Animation, back once again with another tutorial. This week we're going to look at some modeling instead of the usual rigging that we've been looking at the past few weeks. I wanted to talk about one of the struggles that I ran into with this project from this past summer. The client asked me to model this filter based on schematics and photos and measurements that they sent me. And one of the struggles that I ran into was modeling these threads inside these machined pieces. So I'll show you what the, the final project looked like. Looks like here. This is just a little preview video I did up. And I was able to to source um, some of these fittings and things from online, uh, from McMaster Car, actually. I'll jump over to Chrome here. McMasterCar.com or McMaster.com. And this is a, a website where you can buy all kinds of mechanical things, including bolts and, and whatnot. And they actually provide CAD files for a lot of these bolts, which is a great resource for creating realistic 3D models with a bunch of um, with all these details, nuts, bolts, washers, and that type of thing, fittings like these, like these fittings here. Um, so yeah, I'm going to, I can show you here the product detail, and then down here, it gives us an option to download the step files or SolidWorks, IGES, whatever you need for these bolts. So I downloaded those to to use for these fittings and whatnot. Um, and typically the way that you would create, I'm going to isolate these two things um, go alt h just to hide everything else in the scene um, typically to to create threads like this you would use a model like this one and then do a, a boolean which uses a you use a mesh and then it, it defines uses this mesh to cut inside of the other mesh and it would create threads like this. But the problem is, the problem was that uh, these meshes are really quite nasty um, because they're step files. If I isolate this and look closely, they're not watertight. They look okay rendered, but here you'll see there's the edge flow is terrible. They're really not constructed properly because they were made in a CAD program as opposed to 3D modeling. And that means that they're useless for doing these Boolean operations. So I had to figure out a way to model my own threads to use for these Booleans uh, in the, the machined aluminum parts of this model. So. Anyway, that was a long introduction, but let's get started here and I'll show you how to how to create these threads. So um, I'm just going to hide this object here as well. And then to start off, I'm going to create a helix object. Create polygon primitives helix. And it's also worth noting that I'm in the modeling menu set here. And Click on Helix, I'll bring it down. I'll use this, this T fitting here as a reference for these threads. And then press R to bring up my, sorry, E to bring up my rotation tool. And then I'm going to hold down J on the keyboard to snap it when I rotate it. And I'll it'll snap to 90 degrees. And then what I want to do is go to my polyhelix settings and basically just start adjusting these until 
I get something, let's set this radius to 0 0.02. I get something that fits reasonably well over top of these threads. It takes some tweaking. But the, the one setting that is relevant here, that's most relevant here, is this um, subdivisions axis. I'm actually going to turn this all the way down to 3 to create this triangular shaped mesh. And if we look at uh, these threads, I'm going to hide this helix real quick here. If we look at these threads, there's flat on the top and flat on the bottom, and then they have these uh, straight angles between these two these two flat surfaces. So that's different than the threads you'd see on, say, a pop bottle or even on a, a wood screw or something like that. And if I if we adjust these, you know, these axes, there's not there's no shape in here that we can get that that unique shape. There's no um, subdivisions that would that would create that. So anyway, turn it all the way down to three to create this triangular shape, and then we'll, we'll make it by hand. And I actually set up a preset so that you don't have to sit here and watch me for 15 minutes tweaking all of these settings to get it to fit properly. So click use my preset and then just line it up as close as possible. And I'm going to watch on this far left edge here because this the screw actually tapers slightly downward. So we want to model according to the largest diameter. And Pretty centered. I'm going to rotate this so it's lined up there as well, and then just bump it back. Okay, that's pretty dang close. So, the first thing that we want to do is add this flat surface on the top of these threads. And that's an easy fix. We can just use a bevel operation for that. So I'm going to hold down right click and go to edge mode. And then grab one of these edges on the top and double click. And that's going to select a loop along the entire length of this helix object. And then Go to Edit Mesh and Bevel, and I'll click this little box here to bring up the settings. And the default, if I just reset this, um, we want one segment. And the, the width is about 0.3, just from previous experience. Um, well, maybe slightly less. So let's, let's take this down to like 0.2. Yeah, that looks decent. It's pretty close. I'll close that, and we can actually adjust this this fraction after the fact. So, okay, that looks good. And then after that, the next thing we want to do is start lining up the inner edges. So I'm going to click on my helix object and go use control one on the keyboard to isolate it. And I want to to start lining up these these inner edges to the threads. So I'm going to shift or uh, sorry right click just right click and hold and go to the edge select mode and then double click on one of these edges and you'll see once again it selected an edge loop and traced it through the entire helix 
and it's only the one on the left. So control one again to bring back our reference object. And I want to use my scale tool. So I'll click R on the keyboard to bring that up. And there's a cool technique that it took me way too long to learn, cool shortcut. You have three axes here, the y-axis, the x-axis, and the z-axis. And in order to, to, I want to scale this just from this perspective. On the, so I want to scale it on symmetrically on the x-axis and the z-axis in order to, to get it to line up properly. An easy way to do that is to hold down control and then use the click on the y axis and you'll see it it scales symmetrically along the axis axes that are not selected when you use the control shortcut so anyway i'm i will hold down control and use y the y axis and then line that up and then I'll use my move tool, just to tweak it over a little bit. I'm watching over here. I want to line it up on this side. So, and then I want to do the same thing for the other, the other um, side of the the inner threads here. So I just double clicked again, I went back to my edge selection, double click again to select this other loop, and then start using the scale tool again to line it up. Move tool, let's get it as close as possible to that edge. Then the next thing we need to do, if I go back to my object mode, right click object mode and control one to isolate this helix object. It's starting to take shape, but I need to delete the, I need to delete the inside of this in order to create a, a watertight object because right now it's, it's a, uh, you know, like a, a spring or something like that. We need to make it into a bolt. So, First, I'm going to delete the end caps here. So right click and go to face mode, click and delete. And then delete here as well. And then I can actually do a loop selection with faces like I did with the edges. So I'll select a face and hold down shift and then select another one next to it in the direction that I want the loop to trace. And then it's, it's actually going to trace that loop all the way around this helix. Delete those faces. And the next step, I want to start filling in these gaps right here. And I'll the tool that we're going to use in order to do that is the bridge tool. So I will click and hold on right click and go to my edge selection and then select an edge here and then hold down shift and select an edge there. And then if I shift and right click, it gives me a bunch of modeling options here. And I want to use the bridge operation. And I will select this little box here to bring up the options. We want it to be a linear path, and we don't want any divisions between these two edges. And then just click Apply. And the idea is that we just need to do that for every single one of these connections all the way down this helix which would of course be a nightmare if we had to do it manually. So what I'm going to do is do another bridge operation on the other end of this helix. And then that actually closed off this loop, 
this edge loop. So I can double click and it only selects the edges on the inside of, of this. And then if I deselect, hold down control and deselect this end edge and then go back and deselect this end edge. Then as long as these, as long as I have an even number of edges selected, when I run the bridge operation, Maya is going to automatically know that I want to bridge all of these edges, the one across from, from itself. So if I click apply. Yep, perfect. Bridged everything, and now we're starting to get towards a watertight object. But there is there is one problem with this model, and that is, well, a couple problems. Uh, number one, it still is not tapered. It's not it's not quite the right shape as this original reference. And the second problem is it has this tab here, this really ugly thing where the threads end, and we need to get rid of that. So. The first thing I'm going to do is scale it down so that the the threads taper slightly. And I'll right click and go to my edge selection mode to do that, and then just select the loop on the end here. Like so. Let's see how that works. And then to scale this entire bolt or this the all the threads I'm going to push B on the keyboard to bring up my soft selection and use control one to well just isolate this. Go back to my edge selection mode. Okay, now you can see what's going on. And I'll go over to my tool settings and open up soft selection here and I want it to be a volume not just on the surface and linear fall off like this whereas if, if I had a curved fall off then it would make the when I scaled it it would make it wavy you can see a little bit of a, an effect there but if I do it linear then it's going to make a, a straight line more mechanical. So anyway, I'm going to use the same technique as we used before, hold down control and scale on the y-axis. And it's just a slight, it's really, it's not that much, it's just a slight taper. I'm watching right here to, for when it starts clipping through that Axis or through the, the original reference object, like so. And then press B to turn off my soft selection again, and then right click and hold and go back to object mode. And the next thing we want to do is cap, well, to cut off this, this end so that it's, um, it's more of a neat, neat, clean edge. And to do that, I will press spacebar to bring up my four views, and then spacebar again over this top view. And then to zoom in, I will press F on the keyboard to frame this object, and then Control-1 to isolate it. Now I can turn on my shaded mode here, just so things look a little prettier. And I need, I want to right click and go to my vertex mode again, and then shift right click on the object and go to my multi cut tool. What this tool is going to allow us to do is to actually draw a line through the middle of this, of the screen here, and then cut everything underneath that line like a knife. So I'll just add a, a point on the left side of the screen and then hold down shift and add a point on the right side of the screen. You can see it snaps. So I want it to be straight across. And then 
that line will actually stay there and I can move my object around to determine where I want it to cut. So I want it to cut right about here just to make sure that it's a straight line all the way across. And then to slice, I just press enter on the keyboard. And you'll see it, it added a bunch of, of edge loop or a bunch of vertices right here. And to get rid of the part that I don't want, I'll right click, well, first go back to my move tool, pressing W on the keyboard, then right click and go to face mode. And click and drag and select all of these faces that I don't want. And then just press delete. And there'll be a couple, be a couple stragglers here that we can take care of manually. Just little junk faces. So Okay, and spacebar and spacebar, go back to our perspective view, and you'll see we have this nice clean cut now on the end. And I'm in my face mode, I want to go back to edge mode, and then double click on this edge loop. You'll see what we have here. And it uh, didn't cut cleanly, okay. So I didn't cut it back far enough. That's better. Now, so back to edge mode again, and then double click to get an edge loop. Looks much better. And then I will, I'm in my, my edge selection mode. I'm going to shift right click and select extrude edge. And that brings up this crazy indicator, but we don't want to use that. So, I will press R on the keyboard again to bring up my scale tool. And once again, we're going to use that technique. Control click on the Y axis and scale it inward. I just want to bring it out slightly here to create a, just a bit of a rounded edge. And then if I shift right click again, I can extrude it again. Bring up my scale tool, scale it down like so. And if I wanted to, I could scale it again here, or I could extrude it again rather, and push it back to make a tube. But in the original model, this, um, the inside, I will bring up this to show you, it actually connects there's a, a hole drilled through the, the inside of this um, to, to connect to the, the flow through the inside here. If I turn on x-ray, you can see it. So to what I can do is, is model that right into my, uh, into my bolt object that we've been creating. so that we can do both, create the, both the threads and the passageway through the, the inside of that machined piece at the same time. Hopefully that made sense. So I'll right click and go back to edge mode. And instead of putting it inside of this, I will bring it out. Doesn't really matter how far. And then 
right click, shift right click, and fill hole. And this doesn't have any edges on it right now, which isn't best modeling technique. So I will right click and go to face mode, select the face, shift right click, and then poke face. That adds all the edges that we need. And then I'm going to, this end really doesn't matter because we're only going to be using it for a Boolean operation. It just needs, as I said before, it just needs to be watertight. So I will right click, grab this edge, double click, select this edge loop, shift right click, fill the hole, same drill, face select, shift right click and poke. And now we have our watertight object that we can use to make the threads for, for this inside of, I will just create a, a new, new proxy machine piece of aluminum. So we have something to demonstrate with. And turn up the divisions. And then I'll just stick this in here and line it up approximately. So, and then I want to select my machined piece and then select this bolt or whatever it is that we just created. And then click mesh and go to booleans. And then I can use the difference option and the default default settings should be okay. Just click reset yeah, default, click apply. Voila. We have uh, nice threads on the inside of our model here. The edge flow is reasonable, not perfect, but it's reasonable. And we have this passageway going back inside of the side of the model. Then we can continue modeling this, the rest of the piece as needed. And this goes in here like so. So I hope that was helpful. Hope you learned something new today, some modeling techniques. Please, if you have any, uh, if any questions or concerns or run into any problems, if I didn't explain things, if I could explain things better, please leave a comment below. And you can see more of our work at raconteuranimation.com. Take a look at the videos. Let me know if you see any effects or things that you would like to learn about. Um, I'm pretty sure before too long I'm going to be doing a tutorial about particle systems, which are their own form of of hell. Perhaps, perhaps two or three tutorials. We'll see. We'll see how long it, it lasts. But anyway, check back next week for another tutorial about something, and um, I hope to see you all again soon.